during our spring break, we, break, spring break, we were gone for, I don't know, two, almost three weeks. Two and a half weeks. Two yeah. and a half weeks, yeah. And during the spring break, I went to Los Angeles for a three-day media tour to promote the Sherry Show to let people know, hello, hey, the little show that could is over here. And um, literally, y'all would have thought that I was Mariah Carey, the way I rolled up <laughs> with my entourage. That is all... <laughs> that is... <laughs> like, literally, that is everybody that I travel with. Uh, and I was miss... We were missing James, because James was not with us. Oh, he's, yeah. He's normally... James, our security. Big James normally Bert. goes yeah. with us. Yeah. Big James. Next time, James, you'll be with us. So somebody recorded us leaving out of one of the TV studios. And I had my Emmy-nominated glam team. That was Theo, Rodney John, <laughs> Willie Sinclair III. That was uh, my two publicists. Uh, that's Simone Smalls, Laura Mandel, who's the publicist for the show. Uh, I, my, that's my assistant, Edie, who don't... She never wants to be seen, so she did it backwards and bumped into everything. And then... <laughs> Of course, I had John. He goes with me everywhere because he just, you know, when I'm the Tasmanian devil, as he likes to call me, he can calm me down. So, I, you know, like, how you, you see the clowns getting out of that clown car? Yeah. That's literally the way... That was us every single time. We were the clowns, and, they, and people were standing in the hallway, but I need everybody to come with me. So uh, we did press, and it's so nice to impress... Um, for the show, because I don't ever get to do it. We started things off on the radio with iHeart's Ellen K. Now, some of y'all may remember Ellen K because for years she was opposite Ryan Seacrest yes. on his nationally syndicated show. So now Ellen has her own show, and she, Ellen K, holds the distinction of being the first and only female to anchor a morning radio show with her own <laughs> namesake in Los Angeles radio history. We had a ton of fun. And Ellen, we still gonna go out to the bar. I told you that. We gonna role play me and Ellen. Then I stopped by Access Daily and I sat in with Kit Hoover and Zuri Hall. And we toasted the news that the Sherry Show got picked up for three seasons. It was just so much fun being in L.A. And then I got to return to Jimmy Kimmel Live. Now, I have not... I haven't been on Jimmy Kimmel's show since 2012 when I got voted off Dancing with the Stars, and I don't even remember. I was so devastated, I don't even remember doing the interview. So it was really good to be back on his show. I was so nervous behind the stage because this is what happened. Every, I didn't start it twirling. I only did it one time, and now everybody writes in and goes, Sherry, I love it when you twirl. So now I twirl hoping I don't fall every time I twirl. <laughs> But I twirled on the show when I, ca when I came out to see Jimmy, and I finally got to tell him in person how great the bathrooms are at his comedy club. Uh, take a look. At your comedy club, Jimmy, yeah. you got a bathroom that is like, you got everything in the bathroom. What do you mean? I mean, like, you got candy in the bathroom. Oh. You got snacks in the bathroom. You got a box of tampons. I don't have a uterus, so I can't use that no more. <laughs> but you got, like, you got everything in that bathroom. That's what I said. I said, there's there got to be tampons. There have got to be snacks. I mean, You've everything. You've got to make sure that these, this bathroom is a place people want to come to eat. Jimmy was amazing, and I hope to be back. Then I stopped by my L.A. affiliate, Fox 11, and I interviewed with both Melvin Roberts and Jen Lammers. And later, I interviewed with Amanda Salas, uh, Aroxia Carapetian, and Sandra Indro. So it was fun being... It's, sometimes I, I miss being with uh, a bunch of girls talking. So we did that. Hey, good day, L.A. family. And then later that day, I got to sit down later with Melvin Robert again for a one-on-one -on -one interview interview for Extra. And what I love about Melvin, he, he said that um, Melvin used to be a school teacher and he started his TV career in his 30s. And everybody was telling him, no, he couldn't do it. It was too late for him to do it. So he says that every time I talk about being blessed later in life, it really inspires him to keep going. So keep going, Melvin, because you're doing an amazing job. Melvin gonna have his own talk show. He's good. And then I went to tape E! News with Justin Sylvester and Kelty Knight. 
Now, let me tell you something. This is the funniest thing. You see me in this white dress. I got the white blazer on. It's a beautiful dress. But I had to put the blazer on because the dress busted the zipper all the way down. Uh, right before the interview, right before we sat down. And here's the thing. I tried on every, all of my clothes before I went to L.A. for these interviews. They fit perfectly. But like I said, I was gone almost three weeks. I was eating my way through every city <laughs> that I did stand up on. So when Willie uh, Sinclair III kept trying to zip it, he kept grunting, and he was grunting. <laughs> then he called in my assistant, Edie, to help hold the zipper, and she was grunting. And I told him, I don't... I'm really, I'm really getting a little uh, upset about all of this noise y'all making. <laughs> trying to zip me in. And I said to Willie, now I got a waist train on and a space. I go, is there a problem? And he laughed. He goes, no, no, there's no problem, which means, uh, yeah, you the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally get the zipper up, and he's like, you know, just walk straight, don't... You know, because I'm, like, to dance. But I, I could feel the zipper loosening every time I moved. And I said, let me just sit still. So I sat there, and they were like, all right, we're ready. And all of a sudden, I felt... You ever had a zipper bust on you? I just felt it, but it went slowly, and then it started going fast. <laughs> and I tried to catch the zipper as it was going, but it went... It was like, hi, bitch, got you! Went up under my hand. <laughs> the zipper went right up under my hand, and all I felt was air, just air <laughs> on my... And then once the zipper busted, and every, it didn't even matter that I had on a waist trainer. My stomach was like, well, I want to be part of the party. <laughs> I'm gonna just hang on out. Everything just hanging out up the, above the waist trainer, below the waist trainer. So the zipper is busted all the way up. And everybody, nobody saw it, so they kept going, it's fine. And I would show them, and everybody kept going, dear God, wow. <laughs> so I literally, I had to turn away from the camera so that the zipper, <laughs> I turned away. But if I had turned, you could see all of my spanks, all of my thighs. It just was everything. Oh, my goodness. Thank God I... Jeez, I ain't gonna say nothing more about that zipper buster. <laughs> But, uh, but I managed to pull it off. And you see, I put my hair right where the zipper was busted. <laughs> I pulled my hair so it could catch over, the, over all of the, the three little people that are hanging under my arm. <laughs> the three little people that I call skin that hang under my arm. So the last day, I got to see my old friends Heidi Hamilton and Frank Kramer of the Heidi and Frank Morning Show. Now, they... <laughs> Heidi and Frank... If anybody remembers me from Dish Nation, I used to work with Heidi and Frank in the studio. I love them so much. And, of course, Frank could not let me leave without telling one of his inappropriate jokes, which I would tell you, except I'd be in human resources. So, uh, I love you, Frank and Heidi. And last but not least, I went on the interview with my friends at The Talk. It was Akbar, Amanda, Jerry, Natalie, and my girlfriend for over 30 years, Cheryl Underwood. And I had such a great time with them. It was so much fun at the talk. And I just have to say, I love Cheryl Underwood so much because when I was a struggling comic and I had no money and it was getting evicted everywhere, she would take me out on the road with her and I would open for Cheryl and she would pay me in cash. And then if I helped her take pictures with her fans, she would split that money with me. And so I, I just will always be indebted to Cheryl Underwood. Because I was, when I tell you, I was broke, broke, broke. And she would help me out all the time. And so Friday after my interview aired, uh, they had an announcement that the talk would be ending at the end of this year. So I am sending love to everybody over at the talk because you have made for 14 seasons people smile <laughs> and escape. We love you over here, and I know you all are gonna go out with a bang. So I had a lot of fun in uh, L.A. Now I got to tell you about... I'm not supposed to tell you about what happened in Vegas, but I'm telling you tomorrow what happened in Vegas. Woo! That's a big one. <laughs> We're gonna have